Hi everyone, it's Neve here. Welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be using my Use It Up journal and just playing with some textures that I had in my journal. So this is an old gel print uh, page that I had. It was me cleaning off my stencil from some printing that I'd done and I decided that I wanted to do some paper cutting and I thought I'd use the stencil that I had or one of the pages at least to use as a sort of lace overlay in my journal. So I, I, here I'm just very quickly cutting out the pages. The trick to doing this, this has been sped up lots and lots, is to have a really sharp X-Acto knife or a Stanley knife. Um, I use like a um, surgical knife. Have lots of um, sharp blades to it just to make sure that it's cutting really really fine um, cleanly when you're doing it you're not tearing the edges particularly if you're doing something like this it's got lots of little bits in it that you want to remove the other thing is move your paper not um, not your knife however because the book is quite big I'm actually breaking that rule and actually moving the knife and not my paper the reason you try not to move your knife is it does actually hurt your wrist a lot if you're doing lots and lots of this over a period of time for just doing one page it's not going to be too much of an issue finally what i've got in between is an old kitchen and um, chopping board this is a really cheap one i got from ikea that i was able to cut in half and i use it just to um, be able to insert into my journals as i'm cutting I find that um, because it's quite thin, it um, doesn't bulk up my book too much and I can actually slip it in between the pages. Some of the self-healing craft mats that you get from the craft stores and so on are a little bit too thick and it can sort of bulk it up and you can't get close to the edge like I've got here. So having something that you can sort of slip in is really handy. I think for a pack of four it cost me like three dollars from Ikea. I'm sure your local dollar store or a reject shop you can get something similar fairly cheaply. I didn't really have an idea of what I was doing with this page apart from the fact that I just wanted to play with some paper cutting. I find that I really enjoy paper cutting in the dilute this is the Dilusions Large Journal and I find I really like paper cutting with the Dilusions Journal because it, the paper is smooth and it's easy to cut, but it's because it's heavy enough cardstock, it doesn't tear as easily. So you, you've got a fairly firm surface to work on. And you can see I'm getting some really fine lines, um, not with without too much bother. When I've done paper cutting in the past, I've found that just cutting my own organic shapes is really fun to do. Um, this was a little bit trickier because I was actually trying to follow a design that was already there but I liked how it came up. Uh, when I was doing it though I was trying to work out how I was going to do this edge piece because I wasn't sure I wanted it going off the edge. In the end I decided to just be brave and actually just cut off a whole heap of the stuff at the side so it's um, you can see that happening here. So I've got sort of the circles leaning over and a bit of a border around it. And I think that was the right way to go because it gave you a bit of a better peek of what was behind the page as well. So you can see on the opposite page too, because I've put the stencil in there, I got the imprint of both sides of the stencil. So I had to come up with something to do with this page. I like the fact that I could, it was almost like a mirror image when you put it over. So you've got this um, second image going over the top. So I need to work with that. Well, I really like those birds in the background. I thought I'd get rid of them because they were just, um, again, cleaning off a stencil. So I started off by putting some black down on my page. I did press it down onto the page because I thought that I could cover the back of those stencils with the black as well, but it didn't really work. So I'll go in later with some extra black paint and put some paper in between to protect it. Now, quite often in my art journal videos you hear me talking about my the pages I use in my books to sort of mop up any extra paint and you can see me slip that in there. I use a piece of watercolour paper and paint on it 
that any excess inks and sprays go on it and when I am happy with it or I think oh that's a really cool design I'll actually go and scan it in in my computer and then I can print it up and use it as collage papers and I really like having that in my my sort of arsenal to use. I decided that I wanted to add some colour to the left hand side page so I was using my watercolours. I started off using some of my um, handmade watercolours designs by Rachel Beth which are beautiful metallics and um, vibrant colours but on this Jane, Dav oh, Jane Davenport um, Dilutions paper it's not designed for watercolour so I wasn't getting the effect I really wanted and so I pulled up my Jane Davenport palette which is brighter and it's a lot more pigmented and works better on this paper I think it's also working much better because it actually has the tooth of the other watercolour underneath acting as a little bit of a primer. So I went in with really loose circles over the top, sort of following the design of the uh, gel print that was there, but being a bit loose with it. While I was doing that, I was wondering what to do with the other page. So I haven't played with modelling paste for a while and decided to pull that out. And this is a stencil from stencil girl. They're very fine stencils but they do have beautiful designs and so if you're willing to use that it works really well. So just using a little spatula and trying to spread it out as evenly as possible you just need to be careful on those wide open spaces near the top and down the bottom that when you're using the spatula you're not scraping it off again um, just so you've got an even layer. You can see me pull that off and you've got the design which is really lovely and I was just going to put that into another book to get some of the excess paper off. I did actually leave this overnight to dry and now I'm adding some of the Jane Davenport's incredible inks in Limeade, Blueberry, Fresh Air and Mermaid Tail I think. So all the sort of blue teal colours and just using some water to spread it out. Now these are a semi-permanent ink, um, so once they dry they don't really react with water again. The good thing about putting them straight onto the modelling paste as well as it sucks it up into the modelling paste, excuse my eye, I'm sorry, I was looking for some uh, paper towel. So it sucks it up into the modelling paste so it's not going to be removed as easily. And I was really liking how it sort of replicated that watercolour effect from the page, on uh, the previous page. Because I've got such a puddle of paint or ink in the middle, I was trying to drip it off and I've got some watercolour paper to drip it off so I can use that for something else. And then I go in with a heat gun and heat it up just again to dry it. Now, just so you're aware, the Jane Davenport Incredible inks do have a scent to them. They're very mild. Usually scented things do drive me demented, give me a headache and so on. I don't have an issue with them with these inks. Um, but the smell be does become more intense when you heat them. So just be aware if you are really sensitive to smells that um, you may want to just let it dry naturally. So now I'm sort of thinking about my page and how I'm going to do it. While I liked the left hand side page, I wasn't liking my lace pattern overlay. So I decided to go in with some black paint. So I've got a bold contrast between the two pages. And I'm just painting over it. So again, you can see how this works as a stencil. And I'm using another piece of paper in the middle because I know I can tear this up and use it again in another piece of artwork. I've sort of got that stencil pattern on it already. I'm using the Dina Wakely Black Gesso, um, which dries really, really quickly and it's a really matte finish. And I've just sprayed over the top with some Heidi Shine Gold Spray. Now just be aware with the, the Heidi Shine Gold Spray, um, due to the formulation of it, I think it's got some oils in it or something in it. It takes a while to dry and it can be quite sticky. So you need to make sure it's dried thoroughly before you press it down onto um, any other surface. That's why you saw me with the heat gun. Um, however, it is a beautiful gold colour. Um, it has been discontinued though, so you may struggle to find it. I know a lot of people have it in their stash already, particularly those people who follow um, Inky Quill. She, she's a great admirer of the stuff. She puts it on everything. Um, other things that you could use instead, I know the Dilutions 
uh, shimmer sprays, the new ones that released at the start of this year, the sunshine yellow is a beautiful gold colour so you may decide that you'd like to use that instead or any sort of metallic or mica sprays over the top will give you a really good shine. So I'm just going in, you can see that sort of sticking to the page so I'm going back in and just fixing any bits that got pulled off and I did get, I wasn't very careful with putting my paper down so I got some black on the side but I just wiped that off with a um, baby wipe and it worked okay. So now I'm thinking what am I going to do with this page. I quite like how it's looking on the right hand side but the left hand side still needed something. So I went to my usual go to and adding words in some shape or form. So these are the collage words from Dina Wakeley. I think it's from her second release uh, uh, with the new collage words that she had. So art is your soul and your heart and seeking and finding and the wind. Lots of different words and I thought I could put each of those phrases in each of the circles and therefore when you put the lace over the top that you could still see those words peeping through. So for a change I'm actually using a paintbrush to do this so I'm not getting matte medium everywhere um, but if you are using a paintbrush and you want to use that paintbrush again please make sure you put it into some water or clean it off straight away afterwards which is you know something very out of character for me because usually my paintbrushes sort of just sit there or they sit in the water pot for a few days at a time. I'm not very careful when it comes to my paintbrushes and I know I should be. So just sticking down the final few words and I was feeling happy with this page. It sort of lost its way for a little bit but then it sort of came back. And I really loved it as soon as I put that black over the top. So next all I'm doing is adding in a little bit of texture into the missing circles and I'm using some um, Distress Oxides, I think this is a Twisted Citron and some of the Dina Wakeley stamps as well. She's got lots and lots of circle stamps which I love with textures and scribbles in them and it just really tied in with this page with the loose circles and just adding in some extra colour. So I think that was a Wilted Violet and this is a band, uh, might be worn lipstick. So just to giving a sort of a combination of the solid circles and the open circles just to add in a little bit more detail. I really love this um, broken circle with the dots in it too. And the blue in this picked up the blue from the other page so sort of started to tie the two pages together. With the fossilised amber of this yellow colour it was pale enough that I could sort of stamp it over the top of some of those words and make sure that it didn't lose its way too much. So this is pretty much the the end of the page. The only other thing I was going in and doing is on the modelling paste I'm just adding some Inca gold wax. Gold wax over the top just to pick up some of that gold highlight from the black and to highlight the texture of that page a little bit more and just go around the edges just to give it a little bit of a border. It also picks up the um, edging or the texture in the edges of the modelling paste as well. So this is a close up of the final page. I had fun doing it. I'm glad I was able to still see some of that gel printing in the background or at least use it as part of my paper cut. And I love using modelling paste in my journals. I don't do it often enough because I tend to work quite quickly. So it was nice to actually use a full page and give it time to, to cure and be able to be incorporated into the full page. I hope this has inspired you to get into your Use It Up journals and to have a go with something you've got printed in there already. Thank you so much for joining me and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.